In the following series of videos, you will learn how to access and adjust some of your MacBook system preferences. Remember, your MacBook is managed by the district, so some of the settings and features will not be available for you to change. In this video, we will focus on the first row of settings. There are three easy ways to access your MacBook system preferences. You can click on the gear icon on your dock or your launch pad. You can also click on the Apple icon at the top left and select System Preferences. Let's go ahead and open System Preferences. The very first thing you see is the ability to log into iCloud. We recommend that you use your EPISD's 200 gigabytes of iCloud storage space by using your EPISD email and password. If you use a personal iCloud account and are not paying for the extra storage, you will only have access to 5 gigabytes. Once logged in, you can use the 200 gigabytes of iCloud storage space to automatically back up your files on your MacBook laptop. You can set it to not only save your photos, mail, contacts, and Apple app files, like pages, keynote, and numbers, but also your documents and desktop files. You will need to log into the options in the iCloud settings and select desktop and documents. The one folder that does not save automatically is your download folder. You will need to move your fi the files you wish to save to the cloud by either moving them to your iCloud folder or your documents folder. You can even move them to your desktop screen if you wish to save them in iCloud. Now let's start with the first row in the general setting. Inside the general settings window is where you can change some of the appearing settings like the option for light and dark displays or you can set it to auto and it will go dark at the local sunset time and go back to light at the local sunrise time. You can also set your accent tones, highlight colors and your sidebar text size. One option that you may want to change if you have a Promethean panel or a touchscreen display is the show scroll bar settings. This is a preset to automatically based on mouse or trackpad, but you may want to change it to always so you can easily go up and down a web page or document with the touch features on the panel. Another setting that is important in this window is the default web browser selection. It is preset to Safari since that is Apple's web browser, but you do have the option to change it to your preferred web browser such as Chrome or Microsoft Edge one should download the apps from self-service. Although Safari is a very good browser with a lot of added features like reader view and offline reading list, we do recommend downloading Google Chrome and changing the preferred browser on student devices. EPISD websites like ClassLink and Schoology work best with Google Chrome. The recent item settings allows you to increase or decrease the amount of apps and files you will see in the recent items window of your finder or in the Apple menu. The number you set here is a personal preference. If you have multiple Apple devices such as a MacBook Air, an iPad or an iPhone and they are all connected to the same iCloud account you will be able to turn on and use a feature called handoff. You'll need to enable this feature on all of your devices and make sure to have Bluetooth as well as Wi-Fi on them. Apps that work with Handoff include Safari, Mail, Maps, Reminders, Calendar, Contacts, Pages, Numbers, Keynote, FaceTime, and many third-party apps. To learn more about Apple's Handoff, you can go to the link on the screen. I will now click on the Show All button or what many people call the waffle to view all of the settings. The next setting we will look at is the desktop and screensaver. These settings will be based on your personal preference and you can bring in your images or use the images that Apple has shared. If you use the auto feature on the computer's appearance settings, you will want to leave the desktop in dynamic, dynamic mode to allow this feature to work.
Let's now look at the dock and menu bar settings. The first option on the left side is the dock settings. From here you can change the size of the dock, enable magnification, and change the position of the dock. We covered all of the dock settings in the Mac OS Monterey video. Underneath the dock and menu bar settings is the new control center options. That is the new menu icon on the Apple menu bar that looks like toggle switches in the control center. The control center gives us the ability to clean up our Apple menu bar and host many of those settings in the control center drop down menu. Some settings can be set up to be displayed in only the control center or in both locations and some settings are only seen in the Apple menu bar. Going back to all the settings there are some quick things to point out for Mission Control, Siri and Spotlight. You can access Mission Control by doing a three finger swipe up on the trackpad. But in those settings, there are some keyboard shortcuts that are preset that also let you use the control up arrow to activate it or control down arrow to view or open application windows. You can even select a shortcut to bring you back to the desktop screen. Hot corners have been around since Mac OS Mojave. With this setting, you can set your pointer to hover to any corner of the screen and enable functions like going to the desktop, turning on the screen saver, locking the screen, and other features. You can learn more about hot corners by going to the link displayed on the screen. Inside the Siri settings, you enable or disable Siri you can change your keyboard shortcut and change the language as well as the voice type. You can also delete your Siri and dictation history and show or hide from the Apple menu bar. After Siri, we have the settings for the power search engine called Spotlight. We will discuss Spotlight in detail in another video, but in the search results settings, you can enable or disable the locations where Spotlight can look for answers to your queries. You can also change the keyboard shortcut, which is preset to Command Space. In the Language and Region settings, you can change the calendar type, time formats, temperature scale, and the option for a text reader to also read the text inside of images. The last setting on this row is the notifications and focus settings. Both of these settings allow you to silence your notifications while you're doing things like sleeping or driving. Notification and focus settings can be shared on multiple devices. You can learn more about focus on a Mac by going to the link displayed.